everybody, and welcome to the Chemistry 121 Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos. I'm Joy Smokey, and in today's episode, we're going to be discussing something that's pretty cool, at least I think, orbitals. Orbitals, you say? Yes. By the way, I'm Kevin Martin. And we'll be presenting this video. So, orbitals. I have noticed that you put this periodic table up here. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's important. It is important, yes. To talk about orbitals. What are orbitals? All right, so before I talk about orbitals, let's refresh our memory on one of those subatomic particles, the electron. Mm -hmm. Now, you remember the electron, right? It's yeah. that tiny particle that's negatively charged and responsible for making atoms. Mostly empty space. Exactly, because they whiz around, you know, pretty far away from the nucleus, you know, and they got the high energy and all that sort of thing. Okay. So, but the electrons have orbitals, oh, just really? like planets have orbitals. Okay. Okay? But it's not the traditional kind of orbital that you might think. You know, you're probably used to, like, you know... The sun is in the orbital around the sun, you know, it's a straight line, the same circle all the time, over and over again. And electrons don't do that. Nope, they exist in clouds. Clouds? Yeah. Really? Yes. Wow. Which is pretty cool. So basically it's like, you think of it as if you give Coca-Cola to a bunny in the, in the morning, you know, and he's going to be hopping around the yard, you know, never in the same spot. Kind of the same thing with the electrons. They're going to be in a general region, okay. but you can never really predict what exact spot they're going to pop out in. I see. Okay? Okay. So, I did bring out the periodic table, and that's mm -hmm. for a reason. All because right. it is useful in being able to kind of figure out how these electrons are going to be existing in their clouds or the orbitals. We'll just start calling them orbitals now, since it's easier to call them that. All right. Okay? So, the periodic table is made up of periods. Right. Obviously, we have those. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Right. Okay? Now, each one of those is called an energy level. Okay? I see. Which basically means that each time, you know, you go down one, you're increasing in energy, basically, because, you know, as you go down here, you're making more electrons, bigger element, bigger atoms and elements and stuff. Uh, yeah, and the electrons are getting further and further from the nucleus. Exactly. Okay. So basically, it just kind of increases their energy. Okay. That's energy level. All right. Okay? Now, you remember the noble gases, the octet rule, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So basically, every time you pass a noble gas, essentially, you're going to be starting a new layer on top of that. So okay. the next energy level and... You know, basically, you can't have all the same electrons in one tight spot. Again, going back to the bunny example, the yard would get pretty cramped if you have, say, a hundred bunnies that all drink Coca-Cola in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, I, so when I think of that, it's yeah. like, you know, going here, making another layer. It's kind of like making lasagna. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much. All right. Okay. So there's another reason I brought out the periodic table. Mm -hmm. Okay? The periodic table is sectioned into, basically, groups. You know, kind of like big chunks of groups, rather. Oh, so these blocks. Blocks, exactly. Okay. And there's one, two, three, four of them. Okay. okay. These two columns here make up what's called the S block. The S block. Mm-hmm. So I'll go ahead and write that down. All this stuff here in the middle makes up what's called the D block. The D block. Okay. Mm -hmm. This big block right here that's mostly nonmetals, including the noble gases, is going to be called the P block. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have this group of stuff down here, the radioactive elements, which make up the F block. All right. Okay? Now, basically, each block has their own unique design, basically, for an electron cloud or an orbital. Okay. Okay? Um, and based on that, you know, they're different sizes, so therefore they can hold different numbers of electrons in them. Okay? All right. So the S block, and I'll go ahead and grab a different color, we'll say purple. The S block can hold a total of two electrons. So basically if you have an S orbital, you can only have two electrons inside of it. Would it have anything to do with the fact that it's two columns? Two. Yeah, that's exactly it. Oh, really? Because the cool thing about the periodic table is that it's literally like reading a book. And every element basically represents one electron, which makes sense. You know, 19 to 20, 21 to 22, you're basically counting up. So it's not just randomly arranged. Exactly. All right. All right. That's the pretty periodic cool. table is called periodic because it's supposed to make sense. Ah, okay. Like most chemistry is. All right. Okay. So, can you get a guess what maybe the D block can hold as far as electrons go? Um, well... You did say that, you know, the number of columns do make, you know, basically tell us, so... Mm -hmm. So this whole big thing's the D-block, right? Yes. Okay. 
I'm going to say 10. 10. You got it. Nice. So a d orbital can hold 10 electrons in it. Okay. Okay. How about the p block? This is the p block, right? Yes. Six. Six. So you can have six electrons in a p orbital. Mm -hmm. And finally, f. F. I guess that's what this is. Mm-hmm. Fourteen? Fourteen. <laughs> the f orbital is the biggest of them all. It can hold a grand total of fourteen in there. Wow, that's a lot of electrons. Yes, exactly. Now, all these different orbitals have different shapes. You know, you don't, you, I wouldn't worry about that too much. It's not that important for you guys as nurses. But just know that basically these guys are, re, are arranged in such a way to make, you know, like different dumbbell shapes and stuff so that way the electrons aren't all cramped into one spot. Why do we even care about orbitals? Well, again, it's all because things are related to stability, okay? Uh -huh. And since different elements have different levels of stability, you know, like these guys in here are a little bit more stable to say like fluorine, uh -huh. you know, because based on the relative location of the noble gas and all that sort of stuff. So it's useful to be able to know where exactly an electron is in an element or an atom to enable to kind of predict its behavior, what it's going to do, what it behaves like, you know, all that sort of stuff. Okay. That's why we use orbitals. Okay? Uh, it's kind of a guide to say, okay, here's where this electron is. Exactly. It's like a roadmap for electrons. Ah. Okay? Yeah, that makes sense. So that's basically what orbitals are. Oh. But it's pretty simple. That's the concept. I mean, we would use, we use what's called electron configuration, which that'll be another episode. And electron configuration is a, you know, a way to you know, literally list where exactly the electron is going. Okay. But this is essentially the concept for the orbitals. And you're going to want to remember the different blocks, like the S block and the D block, the F block and the P block. Okay. And the number of electrons that they can hold. All right. Okay? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Orbitals are fun. Yep. I'm going to go whiz around like that bunny. Well, I think I'll join you. <laughs> All right, let's go get some Coca-Cola. Yeah. Bye.